Hi everyone, I want to do a tutorial for you on uh, some stuff that I shot out in Nana, which is, you know, kind of my favorite place to go and hang out. Uh, let's find the one I want. It's this one here. So I reckon we can make something out of this. This was taken from the top of a hill and there was sunlight just hitting this little spot here, which I thought was quite nice. We need a new sky and all that, but let's just work through it little bit by little bit um, uh, so things that we need to do with this well first thing I always do when I'm in camera raw so obviously this is a, a, a raw image and uh, I always use camera raw for my editing you can use Lightroom does pretty much the same thing I'll click the auto button and see what that does and that just kills it just destroys the life and soul so uh, what I'll try to do is just pull this back a little bit and bring the shadows back a little bit uh, we're going to try and keep a bit of that detail in this area here and then we'll, we'll get rid of it later on in photoshop i'm not too worried about the sky so much let's look at our temperature it's a little bit cool so i'm just going to warm that up a little bit just bringing that temperature up and the tint well uh, I don't generally like too much magenta. Magenta is pretty, look at that, that's horrible. So we'll just mess with that a little bit just to get a bit of a feel. I think that's probably about right. But most of the colour is going to be done later on in Photoshop. Let's just zoom in, make sure that we haven't got anything uh, out of shape. If we hold down the Option key and click on our highlights, we can see there that we've got a little bit of a white uh, uh, trunk happening there which is probably something that small is probably not a real issue but we can go in holding down the option key clicking on the whites and then just pulling that back a little bit more we can add all this sort of contrast later on back into the image um, what else let's have a look I mean now uh, if we hold down the option key and click any of these uh, image uh, these sliders you can see where your blacks are and you can see there it's just we got a bit of black there but not pure black so that's okay so that's pretty much right the next thing i would look at is the detail so i'll zoom in and look at the sharpening let's just bring the sharpening up i always take up around the 100 mark so there's different things that i do uh what i used to do I uh, was bring that up and then I would um, with my noise reduction here I would just bring the luminance slider up to you know 20 25 something like that and that kind of smooths things out so you got it sharp but then it doesn't it gets rid, rid of that crunch now the other thing is you could go and use the denoise um, this new denoise thing reduction noise reduction and that's really good so I mean we could do that instead of doing this we could just um, do it the click on denoise and the problem is it takes a little bit of time and there isn't much in the way of um, noise in this image anyway um, but you can see there let's just see it's a little bit a little bit of noise back in there you probably won't even notice it in most accounts but you know I like my images to be nice and smooth so let's enhance that two minutes oh I'm so used to using my Mac studio I'm using my MacBook Pro at the moment and it's obviously a little bit slower than my Mac studio which does this in about 20 seconds so what it's going to do is it's going to work out you know, what noise is in the image and it's going to take it out and it's going to spit out a new file so you've got the two versions now the, the good thing about that is you can if you want to go back and you think oh that's a little bit too much noise you can open both of those files raw files up layer them in photoshop and then just dial back the opacity on that uh, that noise reduction image now you, you might you don't want to just do it selectively but because um, sometimes if you take too much noise out you can make things a little bit smeary a little bit too soft but this new uh, noise reduction this new denoise filter works pretty well so Anyway, we shall see. Um, so once uh, I've done all that, the other thing I would be looking at is is um, removing the chromatic aberration. So let's, mine is normally always tick, but this is something that 
if it doesn't do it automatically on your system then um, it's probably uh, make you got to make sure you actually do that now I'm just going to zoom in here and now if I zoom it uh, just toggle between the two so that's the one without the noise reduction that's the one with the noise reduction you can hardly see a difference but anyway that's the one we're going to use it's fine this one here so next thing go into optics and make sure this remove chromatic aberration is ticked because that's really important it does make a difference to the, the look of your images so I'm pretty happy with that it's pretty good detail this is a shot on the uh, Leica SL2 and uh, with the 24 to 90 mil lens at 90 mil so that's kind of zoomed in a fair bit um, but ah uh, yeah okay I'm, I'm pretty happy with that I could go and put a vignette and stuff on but I'm not I'm not going to I think this is pretty much right the other thing I could do and I do a lot of this these days is actually um, add add light um, add brushes and brush light in where I want um, this way as well so that yeah uh, you know in this image I'm, I'm just not going to worry about that too much so let's open it up uh, you can see here that uh, my little recipe is obviously setting it up in Profoto RGB normally I'd use Decam 3 but I haven't got those profiles on this laptop so I just use Profoto 16 bits per channel and there's the uh, default size and resolution of 240 because I, I print with Epson printers and it's a native resolution so let's click OK and also make sure you are on 16 bits per channel click OK and let's just open this up now I, I could open it as a smart object but I haven't got any intentions to do to go back into camera raw so let's just open it up okay so there we have it so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get rid of that sky because I, I don't particularly like that sky and I may squish this image a bit as well so what I'll do which is kind of fun and cool is I go seed crop and uh, get that out of the way I don't need my loop deck on I can get rid of that um, do a uh, one to one crop and then I will put my bring my rules up command R and then I've got the crop there and I'm just going to bring these little thingies up um, the guides for some reason they don't always show up if they don't show up just go command semicolon I think it's a semicolon it's one of those sort of things and then uh, you can see where the crop is where the square is going to be and then I just hit escape and V so that is where uh, if I go to squish the image now I want to go to those lines so to do that I go command A and then command T to transform or control if you're on a PC and then I'm just going to move these in a bit and you can see I'm going to try and get that that point of that hill right in the middle as much as I can and um, I'm going to probably take this side all the way across that's good and that side I'll probably pull out a little bit something like that so hit return command D to deselect C for crop and there's my square hit return and there's my square there now if you want to get rid of those guys command semicolon but generally actually I didn't put that right in the middle did I ah oh, well it's not right in the middle but what do you what what do I do I mean well command A command T and let's just bring it back a bit something like that still not perfectly in the middle but hey you know this is all you get for free so there's my composition I'm, I'm kind of happy with that but now we need to put a new sky in so I want to put the sky in before we start doing any more serious heavy lifting so Photoshop thank you you've done some good things and one of those is uh, select sky it does a pretty amazing job I'll invert that 
Command Shift I, and I've got a Command J, cut it out on its own layer. Okay, now click the background layer, and now we're going to go look for a new sky. And I haven't really, I haven't prepared one, which is um, a little bit dodgy of me. So I'm just going to see if I can find something that may fit. Let's try this one. Okay, this is a, an image that's not related, but it's got an interesting sky. So I'll just uh, hit V to select the move tool, and I'll just click and drag and drop that onto this image here. Hit F on the keyboard to get the full screen, and then I've got my lovely bit of sky. Oh, look, let's get a hill on there. No, we're not going to do that, Fletcher. Thinking about where the light's coming from, it is coming from the right direction, even though it doesn't really look like it that much. So yeah, I'm just going to find a, a nice bit of sky to plonk this down. And I think something like that. Because see, now we've got this zigzag shape going on here. I mean, I'm, I'm just making this up, but I think it, it actually is a bit of a zigzag. There's some diagonal lines going on in there. So the, the composition's looking quite nice. The sky fits nicely with that composition. So let's go and have a look at the edge. We'll zoom in to 100%, Command Option 0, and let's see, oops, see, sorry, I'll just take that out. You can see it doesn't fit too badly, the edge is, it gets a little bit fuzzy there on the edge. So what I do is I go Command J to duplicate, select the bottom one of these, and I change the blend mode down to multiply. And then if we turn it on and off, it hasn't done a great deal. Ah. No, yes. That's multiplied. So it should, well, maybe it's just done such a perfect job. So I'm just going to have a look here. Mm, it's a pretty good edge. But what you can do, if you do that, it sometimes it will bring a bit of that. You can see it a bit through here. Anyway, what it's doing is it, it's multiplying the, the sky underneath and it can actually fix your edges. So if your edges look a little bit faded out because of the, the way Photoshop's done it, if you do that, it can fix it. Trust me, and would I lie to you? Okay, so now we have quite a nice uh, image and um, a starting point. Now we're gonna get into some serious stuff. Now you can save all this um, and you know, um, save all the layers if you want, but I'm not going to because I'm naughty. Uh, first thing I'm going to do now is I'm happy with that. You know, I'm, I know I'm confident enough that I'm not going to wreck it going forward where I need to go back with the sky. I think I've done the sky pretty good. And um, so I'm first I'm going to save this as well. Command, up, uh, Command Shift S, and I'm going to save it as. And I'm going to call it uh, CF Tutorial NANUP. Very technical. And I'm just going to make it a TIFF file. And let's just save it to the desktop because I'll never find it again otherwise. Click Save. And OK. So there it is. Now we need to start thinking about what we're going to do with it. Okay, so I can see this being really dramatic if we control the light and we want to have it just on that main uh, peaky range there. So we're going to work on the color and we're going to work on the light. So the light, the starters, I'll duplicate that layer, Command J, go up to image, apply image. And I'm going to change the channel down to red, which always gives me the most wonderful grunginess. Click on mask, select the channel red there and click invert. Invert. And then you can see we have a very nice darkened grungy image, kind of what I have in mind. Click OK. It's obviously pretty pretty heavy in parts, so we can adjust the opacity. So what I like to do with my opacity, as long as the, the V tool is selected, the move tool, I should say, not the V tool, it's V for move. So I guess there is a V in move, isn't there? Um, so they're not completely so stupid. 
although les may say different things about that but anyway let's not go there so i'll go to one hit one on the keyboard and i go to zero then i'll go to two zero three zero four zero five and i'm just looking at the light going where does it look the best and i think it's probably between six and seven six so sixty percent 70% yeah so I want that foreground to be dark uh, but I don't want it too dark just yet okay let's add a layer mask here and B for brush everyone's favorite and I'm just going to use a very low opacity say 20% and I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm looking at where that light already is and I'm just going to enhance it so Click and rub, click and rub, that doesn't sound very, um, yes, well, we won't go there. One, uh, hit one on the keyboard to go to 10% and I'm just gonna feather that edge down there. Now you gotta be careful you don't get halos. So I haven't, I'm not going pretty hard up to that top bit, but I'm just trying to enhance what's there, and, but continue on. Sorry about all the clicky noises because I'm on a, a table without a mouse mat, so it's a little bit clunky. Okay, so if we just turn it on and off, we can see that we're now directing our light where we want. We we don't want all that distracting stuff. Plus, it's taken away that kind of blue blueness, and look what it's done to the sky. It's made it nice and kind of crunchy and grungy and nice. So that's looking pretty good. Command Option C. Um, gives you you can increase your canvas size and I always like to um, put in a little border make sure you got the relative box ticked when you do this select your canvas extension color as white and click OK and it'll just give you a, a little border so I can look, sit back and look at it and by having that really bright white border around I can see that you know my brightest white in this image is nowhere near as bright as that that border so it kind of helps me visualize where where the tonal values are a bit. Um, let's go to adjustments and let's add a, I hate this, this thing in Photoshop. It's so sucky. Um, I wish they would just, actually there's gotta be a way to get rid of that stupid Photoshop. Um, and I'll go have a look at my levels and just see what my little history, ah oh, look, my histogram is telling me that I don't have my white set right. So hold on the option key, click, and I can bring this up. You can see it's starting to clip a little bit there, which I could probably brush back anyway. So let's take it about there. And I know that there was a bit of sky blowing out here. So let's go B for brush. And black is our foreground color. And we'll just give that a little bit of a tickle just so that it doesn't um, blow out. I mean, there's probably other ways of doing this, but this is the way I do it. There you can see now we're just adding a bit more light. I might also um, leave for brush, 100%, make a bigger brush, and I'm just going to darken that bit of the sky off at the top. Uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe have a little bit down there. So that's looking pretty nice. So turn that on and off. You can just see it's just lighten that up a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is think about the colour and i don't know exactly whether i want it to go cooler or or more warm so i just start mucking around so this is this is the i just play i mean i don't have any set rules it's like hmm well let's just start clicking buttons and see what happens because sometimes by clicking buttons you have um you come up with some some brilliance so now i look at my LUTs and i've got LUTs everywhere and I've got all these LUTs. And now if you get 3D LUT created, all these are presets that are already in 3D LUT, which you can download and put into Photoshop. So if you want them, get 3D LUT. Don't ask me for them. Well, you probably can, but it's just a pain having to send them all the time. So if you want to just go out and, you know, do your own thing, now, um, I like mucking around with different, see that one there, um, blue neutrals. 
the neutrals 2.3 oh that maybe was 2.3 um was it I'm not sure the neutrals three Ooh, that doesn't look any good so i, know, I just so i'm just going through anti-green you yuck um uh, lab saturated. we don't want it to be saturated see that's horrible saturation can just destroy an image light and shadows oh hang on that looks interesting that's kind of made it a little bit has it done anything oh yes look it's increased the contrast a bit don't mind it it's kind of getting me where i want to be but it's not changing the color to what i want so let's go add another color look up and we'll have a look for something else i always like looking at um, my favorite teal and orange but in this case it doesn't look so good so forget teal and orange anyway um, you can go through this um, until fixed skin tone is a good one look at that now we've got some warmth happening again uh, make sure the uh, move tool is selected v and then you can hit one and then um, four four is not bad five is getting a little bit six isn't so great three three and four maybe three thirty percent so you see it's taken away that horrible kind of really weirdo green and just made it a little bit more warm and a little bit more natural that was a bit artificial looking there so that's kind of nice and yeah one other thing let's just go in and add a, i think we need to enhance that light a little bit more and we might darken a few other areas so let's go and grab a uh, a curve and grab the little hand here and i'm just going to click and drag that up to get a bit more light there i'm going to invert that command i and my brush tool i'm going to paint with white as my foreground color with a low opacity brush say 20 percent i'm just going to bring up that a little bit more just so that it really starts to pop Again, watch the halos. You'll probably get away with it because of this, the way this is. But if I zoom in a little bit more um, and go a little bit lower, then I probably can get a little bit closer to the edge. We don't want it to be too... Sometimes if you don't get close enough, you'll get a black edge, which kind of looks pretty poxy. That's pretty good. Now the other course, the other thing you could do is create a, a dodge and burn layer, which can work pretty nicely. So let's have a, I'll show you how I do that. So hold down the option key and then click on add, add, add a blank layer. Change the blend mode to soft light. And then I'm going to fill it with um, neutral gray, 50%. So what that does, once you click OK, it gives you this gray layer. So if I paint with white, um, X on the keyboard would see my 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 foreground and background colors were kind of similar then. So if you hit D on the on the keyboard, that's the default for your um, black and white as your foreground and background colors, and the X will toggle between the two. So if I paint with white now and a low opacity, say ten percent, one on the keyboard, and um, I wish I had my tablet, but I haven't. So and then I can start just drawing. See this? See little lines in here of the rows if I just start drawing little lines in there just to kind of help it gives it a little bit more detail and, and it breaks it up and makes it look a bit more dimensional so you know you're creating just some crazy lines but it can help with the uh, the whole effect of course I can I can go back there and hit X on the keyboard and go and paint with black if I want. So I can just darken some of those darker lines and all of a sudden you can create quite a bit of depth. And so normally I would be using my um, 
uh, Cintiq screen with my pen and this is so much easier doing it like with, with a mouse it's not, not quite as much fun no 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 now let's go back to X go back to white just thinking that edge is looking a little bit like it's been neglected a bit so maybe we just if we went in there we could just bring a bit of that back and it's good to go over areas that are already white or oh, sorry light you lighten the light areas and darken the dark areas it's usually pretty good or if you've got lots of mid-tones you can use this to fix up um, make your image a bit more contrasty and interesting but this is a very time consuming way of doing things but it, it's you know if you really love an image and you want to make it look a little bit special it's, it's, it's always good so look at the difference between before and after now you wouldn't even know that I mean that's probably a little bit hot let's go back a bit uh, before after before after it's a little bit too strong so let's take the opacity back uh, V on the keyboard and 10% percent, 50% 20% 30% 50 10 30 30% I think it's good so it's just a subtle change now if you change this uh, blend mode to overlay which you can have as well it looks fairly similar but um, yeah either one of those is good but you can mess around I mean let's just go to multiply what's that gonna do oh bad <laughs> doesn't work with multiply so just stick to soft light or overlay okay just just scrub that from your memory banks that didn't happen but you see this is I mean I've been using Photoshop for I don't know far out how many years be close to 20 years no maybe I don't know and I don't know everything I just know how I need to work it to get what I want let's do a new curves adjustment layer Grab that little hand thingy, click up here because this is where I want it to darken down, and that's good. It's about there. I'm going to grab this point, just drag that down, and that will won't add any saturation. It just kind of moderates it a little bit more. Click on and off, and then I'll invert it, Command I, and then I will look at this and go, oh, where do I want it to be a little bit dark? And generally, it's usually around the, the corners of the sky and all that sort of stuff so with a 30 percent opacity brush we'll just darken this down a little bit and anything that is a little bit distracting i'll just get get it out of my sight this is a little bit hot there and let's see if that's made it better or worse so that's better see because like when it's like that your eyes escaping out the top but by just darkening it a bit more across the top there it just holds your eye your eyes got to go to this this bit here that's the hero and I reckon that's good it's sort of focusing me in a little bit closer so let's put a little border in that command option C and just do a centimeter thing around and that looks pretty good so this is exactly what i had when i took this photo i knew exactly what i was going to do and that was to make that that peak of the hero it had to be symmetrical and it had to be a little bit taller i didn't want it to be too round and uh, this you know to me looks i mean it could be like that in real life you know but it's not it's a little bit rounder than that but you know we're making art we're not um we're not doing anything else okay we're not doing this for the the good of the world it's the well it is for the good of the world isn't it i guess good of my world anyway i'm going to hold down the option key and click on the bottom eye and that's before and that's after now you can see it almost seems like there's a bit of a hard line along here but that's because um when you go between the two 
and there would be a bit of a hard line because you know this is surrounded by um, hills all the way around it so that that's not a bad hard line and that's my that's that's what I'm sticking to anyway the other thing I might look at is one thing that I, I tend to go to as just a just to see what happens is a curves adjustment layer hold down the option key click on the auto button and that gives us all these options and you can see that one always brightens it up which is kind of cool but always it always seems to be a bit too much and this will start looking at the color and working out whether we should have a different color snap neutral midtones Ooh, all of a sudden it's starting to look a bit more old painterly you know what i mean and these all look pretty much the same but let's go with that and let's just turn that on and off blue not so blue more greeny now to me that looks nice because it's cut through cut through the glare we were having quite a blue cast and that um see that's improved it let's turn it on and off blue much nicer blue much nicer oh i think we've by jove i think we've done it now let's just go back in time make sure we don't save that border on there but i think that's it so i reckon it is just about a wrap so if you're happy and you're you know and you know it you can clap your hands or you can flatten the image which is what i'm going to do i'm going to save it i know what i want up here is a little bit questionable this this sort of weirdo and all these white spots i don't like things that are a bit distracting in my images so all this stuff is this is like pampas grass so i would get my little j tool out which is the spot healing tool and and i'm just and i would go through and i'd fix up all this stuff because to me it's it's distracting and you know it if i was there at a different time of the year the pampas grass wouldn't be there probably shouldn't be there anyway um and then i would go through and clean this mother up now um you know i probably should have done a new layer let's save it so look, if we're going to do it properly command j let's create a new layer so if i do any of this work and i don't like it afterwards i can but what i was doing was i was acting destructive but then that's that's the way i roll if any of you know what sort of music i listen to there's no wonder i'm destructive terrible stuff um okay and i mean this is going to be quite boring for you to sit here and watch me spoil all this but you get the you get the idea right i look at the image i'll zoom out command zero and i see areas like a nut they gotta go i'm not a purist okay so don't judge me this is what it is and you just get rid of this ugliness things that are distracting oh that's bad i might just leave that bit because that was really bad um let's go out again what's your eye go to all oh, this stuff look at this this is horrendous so if we can tame that somehow ah damn it big water tank we don't want that it's looking a little bit better more pampas grass it's looking weird that's looking weird so stamp s stamped learning tool and we're just going to drag that line along there so that it looks better looks like it belongs this bit of road here okay so let's i'm going to flatten it because i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to hold add l for lasso and i'm going to click and i'm going to go up and i'm going to go down and i'm going to click like this and i'm going to go around and i'm clicking 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 and i'm going to go up to edit and down to content aware fill wow why is that auto one go away no uh custom thank you very much and then i'm just going to fill it with the areas i wanted to fill it with and see what happens Tong. pretty good pretty good click okay 
and deselect. That looks terrible. Why did you do such a shit job? <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Getting worn out now. That was a terrible job. What the hell? Sometimes you just got to give it a little bit and see what it does. But it needs a bit more of this in there. And that still looks bad. I'm trying to get rid of it. Okay, it's, no, it's looking a bit fuzzy. More fuzzy. Mm, and you can change these things. That's a little bit better. Okay, it's close enough to jazz. So you get the idea. You mess around with it until you're happy. Command D to select. And then I've got move tool J, make it a bit smaller, get rid of that doohickey and this stuff. And there it is. That's a bit ugly. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Get rid of these. Chomp, chomp, chomp. That's looking a bit nasty. And look at that one standing out like crazy. What are you doing messing up my photo? See, that looks much better. I mean, we've still got some detail there, but um, I'm not thinking it's too bad. Here's a little bit of a hot spot. So you can see that. You could just kind of rub that bit out because that's kind of a bit ugly. Just now I'm zoomed in quite a way here, so you know, I'm working on a pretty small amount of, of image. But anything that looks like it's too hot, just tame it and nothing worse than kind of blown out areas that make your image look amateur so if you see any get rid of them I mean saying that look at this these are blown out like buggery but because they're so small and that's a hundred percent so you're not even going to notice that that most details gone in, in those but that looks pretty smart. Yes, I'm happy with that. Let's save that. And that is a wrap.